میں آج ہندوستان کی گورنمنٹ کو آفر کر رہا ہوں کسی قسم کی آپ تحقیقات کروانا چاہتے ہیں اس انسیڈنٹ میں کہ کوئی پاکستانی اس میں ملوث تھا ہم تیار ہیں اگر آپ کے پاس کوئی ایکشنبل انٹیلیجنس ہے کہ پاکستانی انوالوڈ ہے وہ ہمیں دے میں آپ کو گارنٹی کرتا ہوں کہ ہم ایکشن لیں گے Despite Prime Minister Khan's sincere offer to India to hold an investigation of Pulwama incident that killed nearly 40 Indian soldiers in Indian-occupied Kashmir on February 18th, <laughs> the radical Hindu regime vowed to teach Pakistan a lesson. In the early hours of February 26, 2019, Indian jets violated Pakistan's airspace. Meeting an immediate response from the Pakistani Air Force, Indian jets released their payload inside Pakistani territory and retreated. The same morning, Pakistan's Prime Minister called a national security meeting to assess the damage. Prime Minister Khan was left with no other option but to give the green signal to his joint military command to respond to India's uncalled aggression. The very next day, at about 0900 hours, loaded with deadly array of state-of-the-art weaponry, a strike package comprising of total 18 Pakistani Air Force planes rolled down the runway for a top-secret mission. The senior who briefed us, the opening centers for gentlemen, you are the luckiest guys. The strike package comprised of mirages for ground strike, along with Pakistan's indigenously built JF-17 Thunders, with the top cover of AWACS and electronic warfare aircraft, as well as fighter suite. In just under 32 hours, a mission was underway that would demonstrate Pakistan's will and resolve, with clear message that violating airspace of nuclear-armed country is an act of war. The major bone of contention between India and Pakistan is this region, Kashmir, partially controlled by both the nations. The issue has its roots in the partition of Indo-Pak subcontinent of 1947. Uh, Kashmir issue is perhaps the only uh, part of the unfinished agenda of partition which remains because the Indians went astray in terms of trying to occupy something which didn't belong to them. As a result, Kashmir has turned into a flashpoint between two nuclear-armed neighbors, over which the two countries have fought three wars. It is a flashpoint that yet again flared up in February 2019, when an Indian security forces convoy was attacked. India immediately held Pakistan responsible for the attack. A barrage of accusations were hurled against Pakistan. Prime Minister Imran Khan offered complete cooperation in the investigation of the incident. اگر آپ کے پاس کوئی ایکشنبل انٹیلیجنس ہے کہ پاکستانی انوالوڈ ہے وہ ہمیں دے میں آپ کو گارنٹی کرتا ہوں کہ ہم ایکشن لیں گے کیوں پاکستان اس سٹیج کے اوپر جب پاکستان اسٹیبلٹی کی طرف جا رہا ہے ہمارے پاس ہم نے پندرہ سال کی دہشت گردی کی جنگ جس میں ستر ہزار پاکستانی مارے گئے ہیں ایک دہشت گردی نیچے جا رہی ہے امن آ رہا ہے اسٹیبلٹی آ رہی ہے These were the words of Prime Minister, whose own country has been the biggest victim of terrorism. The tragic events of 9-11 changed the world forever. It marked the beginning of global war against terrorism, and Pakistan joined the alliance as the major non-NATO ally of the U.S. The Pakistani military commenced its counterinsurgency operations in its tribal region, bordering Afghanistan, to deny safe havens to terrorists fleeing Afghanistan. In response to counter-terrorism campaigns, Pakistan's own cities faced attacks from terrorist groups. We are the most terrorist-hit country, uh, which faced the first brunt of this global war against terror. During the last two decades, while fighting terror on its own soil in the pursuit of world peace, Pakistan has suffered over 70,000 civilian and military casualties. December 16, 2014, a day that shocked the world. The blowback as the Taliban takes its revenge on the army for launching a military campaign against it. Attack. One of the worst attacks in Pakistan for years. In response to Pakistan military's counter-terrorism offensives, desperate terrorists attack a school in the city of Peshawar, killing more than 140 innocent school children. And I think APS was perhaps the turning point for us as a nation. Those small coffins unified the nation. 
it's becoming a turning point in Pakistan's war on terror. With the entire military leadership present on the first day the school opened after the deadly attack, a loud and clear message was sent. Pakistan would eliminate terrorism and extremism from its soil once and for all. This is what the Pakistani children have gone through for world peace. Pakistani military stormed the remaining areas where terrorists were still present. So what was the thing that you said that you were fighting with your children? They were fighting with APS. The campaign was effective and started receiving global recognition. Um, and having spent a lot of my time in Afghanistan, I really do understand the nature of the task, the problem of this common threat that we all face. And I think it's to huge credit of the Pakistani army that you've managed to clear and so far hold this area. The trick now is the building piece of it, and it's really inspiring to see how that is underway. A lot of effort and a lot of lives have been lost by the Pakistanis in securing large parts of this country over the years and, and those sacrifices from the Pakistanis should be acknowledged. Um, it's been a huge, huge undertaking for them. And that actually what happens here in Pakistan directly correlates to what happens on the streets of the UK. From the time where in Pakistan several years ago, we're talking about seven, eight years ago, when every single day there was a bomb blast in the country for the whole year and it's been coming down and now it is virtually zero by the grace of God. Uh, the Pakistan Air Force and the Pakistan Army have been instrumental in knocking out the terrorist hideouts in the country. And the irony is this, that when you compare that with India, the Indian military has not engaged itself in Afghanistan. Neither has the Indian population faced the brunt of the first wave of terrorism. It has been Pakistani blood and Pakistani blood alone, which has stood for the defense of the international community and for international peace and security. As Pakistan was emerging victorious from an almost two decades long war, the political scene in India changed drastically. With another election drawing near and anti-Pakistan rhetoric being the best selling point, India's aggressive designs were getting clear. Pakistan was also anticipating a possible false flag by India, as it has always been the case. Indian establishment is known for carrying out these false flag operations to target Pakistan diplomatically. The popular TV series Quantico also featured this common Indian state practice. It's a false flag operation. Indian nationalists hoping to frame Pakistan in a mushroom cloud. We won't just scuttle the peace talks and put America on India's side forever. Indian repression in Kashmir has not let up for over seven decades. The last 10 years having been particularly bloody. Thousands of extrajudicial killings, mass arrests, rapes, kidnappings, and gross human rights violations. All have been methods used by the Indian government to respond to Kashmiri's right of self-determination. That the right has been enshrined in numerous UN resolutions has no effect on an intransigent India. With freedom struggle in the valley becoming more and more intense, an attack took place that diverted world attention from the Kashmiri's fight for freedom. The Indian media stirred up a storm in no time, and every Indian was baying for Pakistani blood. Pakistanis must die. Nothing less, Jitendra Singh. We want revenge. Pakistan se yuddh hone hi wala hai. Unfortunately, media, the the the, the media industries tries to sell itself and it uh, sells itself on red brick. It tells, sells itself on 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 cheap uh, uh, sort of uh, saber rattling. Unfortunately. Dupke. With growing threats of an attack on Pakistan, Prime Minister Imran Khan warned India with the consequence of any violation of its territorial integrity. Pakistan retaliate karne ka sochega nahi. Pakistan retaliate karega. Their entire policy had been very carefully nuanced. To term Kashmir issue, which is a 1947 issue left from partition, uh, covered under the Article 1 of the United Nations Charter uh, to be framed under the UN Security Council Resolution 1373 for counterterrorism. They wanted to relocate the Kashmir struggle into a counterterrorism issue. And it is in this context that they planned Palwama. Despite Pakistan's offer to help India with the investigation, in the early hours of 26 February, multiple Indian formations closed in at different sectors. The PAF's response was immediate. I am painting four high-speed aircraft near international border in Fazilka sector. The activity is also developing in south as well. 
Divert cap or line of control. With the AF fighters closing in, six Indian Mirages turned back. Once they met with Pakistani Caps Patrol, they could not have the courage to actually carry out what they thought they were actually going to carry out. While formation of six Mirage 2000s released their glide bombs near line of control, committing airspace violation of around two to three kilometers as they turned back. If someone comes in about a kilometer inside or two kilometers inside and it's turned around trying to get away after having dropped its bombs, which is not too difficult these days, but at the cost of accuracy. The Mirage 2000s uh, fired the Spice 2000 standoff weapons, which overshot the target. With the Indian bomb standoff range of over 60 kilometers, they traversed over 50 kilometers and fell into a forested area, quite a distance from the apparent intended target, and decimated nothing more than a few pine trees. That was not just an embarrassment for the uh, Indian Air Force, but also for the Israeli manufacturers. It wasn't the conventional bombing that they had come over Balakot and bombed, in which case, of course, we could have intercepted them, but this was the first case of a uh, you know, between India and Pakistan in, in any conflict, the bomb being lob, lobbed from about 45 to 50 kilometers away. Although there was no loss of lives and property on ground, the country's sovereignty had been violated. Whether the aircraft came in or not, the bombs came in. The bombs flew into Pakistan, so we took it as a violation of our sovereignty. Images of the site were released by Pakistan, and media reporters started reaching the spot as well. This attack is a casualty. It seemed that Narendra Modi saw punitive action against Pakistan as his key to a landslide victory in the upcoming election and was completely blinded to the danger of potential escalation of hostilities between the two nuclear-armed neighbors. You actually brought this region because of an ill-advised, less thought-of military strategy of adventurism you know, in your bid to show Kashmir as a, as a counter-terrorism challenge while it is clearly an issue of self-determination under UN Charter and dates back to 1947. That you were willing to put the population, 1.2 billion people of this region, under the threat of a nuclear war. Inferiority complex, retarded Indian leadership, which is like a dinosaur, huge in size but mindless. Prime Minister summoned national security meeting the same morning. The violation of Pakistan's tutorial integrity was apparent. Balakot is Pakistani territory by all measures and by all thinking. The response will come at the point and time of our choosing. There was consensus that the response had to be as measured and controlled as possible. The PAF, who was well prepared for a whole range of targeting options, was given the go-ahead by the country's prime minister. On the very next day, brief commenced early in the morning at an undisclosed air base. We carried out a detailed brief in which we discussed all the variations about the missions. As per the mission plan, Mirages and JF-17 Duly supported by escorts and patrolling fighters would carry out a standoff attack against legitimate pre-designated military targets in Indian-occupied Kashmir. Since the mission purpose was essentially to demonstrate Pakistan's resolve and capability, the general area of bombing were the open spaces in military garrisons near the line of control. The aim of our today's mission is going to be 100% bombs on target, whereas Sweet is going to ensure survival of our all strikes. It's going to be our top priority of the mission. At 0, 0900 hours on the morning of 27th February 2019, fighter jets from different elite squadrons rolled down the runway. Uh, the morale of the pilots was intense. They were ready. There was no holding back. Within the next 24 hours, the Indian Air Force went on a high level of alert but they were expecting the Pakistani Air Force to attack at night, but they didn't, they attacked during daylight hours. Broad daylight when perhaps the Indians were taking a break and having their breakfast, 
we approached on the morning, 9 o'clock of uh, 27th February. Uh, and the attack came in the shape of uh, two Mirage 5 PAs armed with um, two H4 standoff weapons backed up by JF-17s with 1,000 pound range extension kits. Two mirages along with JF-17s headed towards their respective pre-designated targets in Indian-occupied Kashmir. The Pakistan should be on notice that all options are on the table. All options are on the table. We, the targets which were selected, some of them at brigade level, some of them at different depots, indicated that we understand what is the standoff capability? They went off, the H4s were fired. And now I started to concentrate on my target, leading the weapon to the target. And you can see the target designator box shift away from the intended target because now the pilot wants the bomb to hit about a thousand yards away. The H4 bombs were steered away from legitimate targets with great accuracy. Time was very limited. I had only 15 to 20 seconds to carry out all this task. On that, I immediately unlocked the weapon and took it towards the right side to unpopulated area and the weapon impact the point which I have selected. The H4 bomb is about 2600 pounds in weight. So the TNT, the explosive is immense. It, the plans were that the H4s would not kill anyone and they didn't. They went off target deliberately as did the uh, weapons from the JF-17s. The aim was not to go for a collateral damage, so we engaged that target slightly offset to show them that we can engage any target at our own time of choosing and at our own will. We engaged simultaneously six targets uh, without crossing. We deliberately dropped them away from the actual targets to give them a message that we don't want to escalate the tensions but if you challenge the sovereignty of Pakistan, we are going to hit you and hit you really hard, right onto the exact target. Strike was not just a strike. It meant that you had so much confidence in your offensive team that you knew that they will hit the targets, carry the precision, send the message across, will overwhelm Indian defenses, overwhelm Indian radar capability, and at the same time be prepared for a counter response from India. The AF's ground strike had, meanwhile, rung alarms on the Indian air defense radars, and patrolling Indian fighters were directed to intercept them. My job was to protect and provide coverage to the striker aircraft, whose job was to go and deliver the weapon in the enemy territory. Formation from PAF's fighter sweep was vectored towards two approaching IAF fighters. There were actually two Su-30s in this sector, and as we say in our profession, they were uh, grinding one plus one at certain altitude. Working at the rear of the PAF strike package were PAF's early warning and electronic warfare aircraft. You've got to understand that the, uh, the communications between all the Indian Air Force aircraft would have been jammed. It must have been pretty difficult out there, up in the air, not knowing what was going on. There was confusion all around in the enemy's flanks. They were running here and there. They were hiding behind each other's tail. The moment one of them, in state of confusion, came into a situation where uh, he could have been a threat to the strikers, uh, I engaged him. After sampling the target data and confirming valid firing parameters, squadron leader Hassan fired air-to-air -air missile. Camera 1, camera 1, Fox 3, Fox 3 off the group. SU-30 is not an ordinary aircraft. It is a multi-role, uh, you know, almost a fifth generation platform. It is perhaps one of the best strike aircraft you can think of. Soon after the shootout, all hell broke loose in the Indian camp. Uh, this guy who's number one was actually shot uh, by myself. He just turned back and ran away like anything. There was also two Mirage 2000s, which claimed uh, which the pilots claimed there were some issues with the radars, allegedly they then pulled out. They had everything that they had that particular day because they were expecting Pakistan Air Force to respond. After having bombed a part of our a piece of our uh, geography, they knew what the Pakistan Air Force was going to do to them in the next couple of days. 
An IAF Mi-17 helicopter was scrambled for a search and rescue mission of downed Su-30 MKI. But in the chaos, it was taken for a hostile unmanned aerial vehicle by the Indian Air Defense Unit at Sirianagar, who fired a surface-to-air missile at it, leading to a case of horrific fratricide. No command and control, no ability to discern what was the real target. It was not the target, but a battery commander sitting there was probably looking for solutions and didn't have those solutions. The helicopter crashed near Budgum in the Indian-occupied Kashmir, killing six air crew. And you have to ask yourself, why would an MI-17 be flying in the area? It appears to me and to many other commentators that that aircraft was there on a combat search and rescue mission to pick up the bound Su-30 pilot. In the ongoing fracas, the patrolling Indian formations dispersed. Five MiG-21 Bisons of number 51 Squadron were scrambled successively from Srinagar. One of these Bisons was flown by a senior Indian pilot, Wing Commander Abinadan, who soon after takeoff was deprived of situational awareness by the PAF's EW aircraft in the air. The jamming aircraft, which did a superb job, Absolute superb job jamming the communications of the, the Indian Air Force. Primarily, he couldn't hear the instructions from the ground controller at all. As soon as uh, we picked up uh, some of their jets uh, crossing the LOC, uh, we executed as per our plan. Target aggressor one. Signal group about to cross LOC. On. Hostel clear to engage. Before he could even get his bearings, Abinadan's MiG-21 was hit by a missile launched by Wing Commander Noman Ali Khan. Uh, it was uh, a planned execution of the kind of tactics we normally execute in our training. Copy kill, other one trailing by 10 miles, bugging out. They went blank, they were dark. It was dark for them. It was like a night. It was day, but it became a dark night for them. They didn't know what had hit them. Abinand had been ejected, recovered on the ground, unstrapped himself from his uh, chute. And uh, some verges came across Megan. Ultimately, the Pakistani army came along and, and took him away. The Pakistan Air Force dominated the environment, the combat environment. So it was a complete whitewash in cricket in terms. गिराया है पाकिस्तान ने पाकिस्तान ने दो भारतीय तैयारे हैं जो मार गिराए हैं जो इब्तदाई मालूम सामने आ रही है which opened the eyes of many in the West. The big story breaking this morning, an F-16 of the Pakistani Air Force shot down a Sukhoi 30 MKI, the latest of India's Air Force. I found on the news that the Pakistan Air Force shot down a MiG-21 Bison and an Su-30 MKI. So I remember being absolutely gobsmacked. Though my ground crew, of course, not knowing what mission I was on and what has happened in the air, there was inquisitiveness in his eyes, which I could spot. Uh, he saw one missile missing of mine, uh, but out of the professionalism, he never asked me. And, and out of the professionalism, I was very excited to tell everybody that this is what has happened. All we did was land the aircraft, sign those jets back, come back to the debrief and prepare for the next day. Prime Minister Imran Khan announced his decision to repatriate Wing Commander Abinadan to India as a gesture of Hindustan peace to de-escalate the tension between the two neighbors. It was an excellent gesture, very graceful, understandable. 
and it is the continuity of our history. Um, a lot of our conquerors, uh, they behaved in exactly the same way. So it's simple, plain magnanimity. Once Pakistan took out these strikes, once the Indian aircrafts were shot down, we didn't see an Indian, you know, air response uh, following this, but we did see something extraordinary. And that was India's missile threat to Pakistan. They deployed these surface-to-surface -surface missiles on the ground. Now this was a very reckless move on the part of the Indians. Neither side had the means of finding out whether these were nuclear tipped or they were conventional. What does it indicate? That conventionally you actually do not have the capability to fight a war with Pakistan? So what we see is that on 27th and 28th night, uh, they gave us a missile threat, which is responded by a counter-missile threat by Pakistan. And we see India freezing. The two bombs used in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, one of them was known as Lil Boy and the other one was Fat Man. They were like boys. I don't know what they really want. Are they trying to bully? Are they really serious about it? I have no idea. Despite tense regional environment, Pakistan went on to observe its national day with a display of its military might. Despite the fact that it was an emergency situation, within a month we were able to carry out the Pakistan Day Parade in full strength like we always used to do. This national day, we also saw multiple other uh, defense partners of Pakistan participating, including uh, China. Included uh, Saudi Arabia, included the Prime Minister of uh, Malaysia, who was there, uh, Azerbaijan contingent was there. The Turkish uh, aircraft, the Solar Turk, was there. So what we see is this: that Pakistan's major defense partners were standing side by side. Even as the situation started to de-escalate, humiliated BJP government in India, backed by rogue RSS radicals and the Bollywood injured Indian media, continued to turn out nothing but fanciful claims. The repatriated bison pilot was immediately credited with an F-16 kill, turning an embarrassing defeat into a victory for Indian public that were looking for answers from a military that boasts the highest defense spending in the world. This is the wreckage of the Pakistani F-16 and how uh, the Indian Air Force knows this is an F-16 is because if you see this part, Nabijit can explain it to us, it's the exact same part uh, coming straight out of an F-16 fighter aircraft. This is what Pakistan is trying to lie about. That part is actually a MiG-21 part uh, because the uh, engine that's being shown out there is a GEF-100. Uh, the Pakistanis use the Pratt & Whitney. So the Pratt & Whitney actually has a diamond pattern. So it can't either be the engine cowling there nor can it be the ribs that hold the engine because the F-16's interior looks very different to that. This absurd national narrative of India was soon refuted as reports started to emerge of no missing F-16's from PAF's inventory. The American security team in Pakistan who actually physically countered the aircraft both in, uh, in all the bases that they're deployed at and they claim that we have counted 76 F-16's which is actually the number. So there was no loss. After that, the Indian government started lying brazenly. And you gave him credit for the F-16? Uh, that is his kill. He was the only guy there. <laughs> and he did it? Yeah. that With an R-73? Yeah, that, that is the weapon that he had selected. We have the uh, R-73 still attached to the motor rail and it still has the thrust vectoring unit underneath. Uh, and this is the missile which many in India claim actually shot down the F-16, which, as we can see, is still here. Then there's talk of one of the missiles not having a rocket motor. And they said, this is the one that was fired against the F-16. They didn't realize that that motor is actually stuck with the wreckage of the aircraft for all to see. So as the aircraft was hit, it fell over on its left wing and hit the ground on the left side. And these two missiles took most of the impact. And this is the R-73 on the right, under the right wing, not burnt, not destroyed. Even during a literature festival that was organized in Chandigarh, India, to promote the false narrative, organizers were taken unexpectedly head on by one of the foreign guests. I will say with 100% certitude 
there was no F-16 struck down. Isn't it odd that parachutes from two very different platforms in that video would look identical? Some simple the but unexpected matter. arguments and put by her outraged the I organizers I, I, and I the know. audience, so you are accusing upon us which the a, guest no, was insulted. If you want to insult me, we will take it outside. I, have a brigade I will not be insulted. I'm here with the wreckage of uh, Wing Commander Abinandan's MiG-21 Bison, which was shot down on February 27th last year. Here's the main tail section. Here's the fuselage, and it's a very, very capable MiG-21 because in the nose, there would have been a Fazatron Copio radar. In the tail, just around here, it had embedded RWR systems as well. And under the wings, there would have been chaff and flare dispensers. But what makes this more interesting is this is an Elta RWR system, which is supposed to be one of the cutting edge RWR systems. So. It didn't seem to work too well that day. What is obvious is he never knew what was happening. The fuel tanks are still with the aircraft and during air-to-air -air combat, you would always release the fuel tanks before taking on your opponent. Uh, the record shows drop tank, uh, which quite obviously means that he did not take the first step. When you get into combat, you drop your tank. The tanks are meant to be dropped, so you're lighter and you're more maneuverable. Quite obviously, he didn't know what the hell was going on. And a lot of people have asked me about that day uh, and how on earth could the uh, Pakistani Air Force of uh, bloody Indian Air Forces know so well. And it's all down to the uh, fantastic training. The briefing, to going to the aircraft, starting it up, going in the air, it was so professional. And of course, it, 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 uh, I owe it back to the institution, to the training that we have been provided with. I've been to Pakistan Air Force many times and I have to say the training is constant. I think 26th and 27th of February very clearly indicated that Pakistan is capable of not only handling an offensive operation inside Pakistani territory with Pakistani defensive measures, but is also capable of carrying out a counter-offensive at will, at discretion, and in broad daylight. The aerial engagement over Kashmir on 27th February 2019 not only confined growing Indian threats to Pakistan, but it also highlighted Kashmir issue unlike ever before, he with more and more world leaders calling Kashmir. out for peaceful the resolution of this dispute. The stability of South Asia cannot be separated from the Kashmiri issue. Because yeah, I've heard so much about Kashmir. Yeah. Such a beautiful name. It's supposed to be such a beautiful part of the world, but right now there's just bombs all over the place. They say everywhere you go you have bombs. And it's, a, it's a terrible situation. It's been going on for many years. As President of the United States of America and has taken the presidency down to moronic levels, I agree with you, Donald Trump is a sexist, misogynistic, bigoted, little informed, vacuous, self-loathing, dirt fuck of the man that he is. On the other hand, present Indian government's oppressive attitude towards religious minorities has already provoked the Indian youth who are now standing up against RSS rule. The recent protests over Kashmir and citizen amendment bill are now spread all across India and situation is already out of control for Modi government. Despite serious domestic challenges, India continues to remain one of the world's highest defense spender. Priorities should be totally different. I have never seen the kind of poverty I have seen in India. I have never seen that level, that kind of poverty anywhere in the world. Europeans have fought battles after battles. They have come to terms, they have realized that that's not the way. You, you either you coexist or you just do not exist. It's that simple. So better sense can prevail and should prevail. And I'm sure it will prevail. And if they will cross Pakistani territory, it will be taken as an act of war, and Pakistan will respond back. Modern combat, modern combat is like an orchestra. Every piece must play its part at the right time. And when that happens, you get a symphony. So you've got to make this symphony function and work together to produce the most beautiful music that you can see. 27th February was that day when an excellent, beautiful music was played for, by the Pakistan Air Force for the people of Pakistan. I think the signal was loud and clear that Pakistan would retaliate if any sort of uh, adventurism takes 
place either in Azad Kashmir or any part of Pakistan. Well, Pakistan has, mashallah, one of the best uh, intelligence agencies in the world. And so we, we knew about uh, the preparation 48 hours before they actually attacked. We knew that they, from our radars and from our information, that they, were, they had, uh, uh, their planes were going to attack us, so we were ready. And next morning when we discovered there were no casualties, we decided to uh, show our resolve uh, that uh, we could retaliate. But we also made sure that there were no casualties on the Indian side. Once you start a conflict, uh, unfortunately, you do not have control over the events. And hence, there was a lot of worry. And when we returned the pilot immediately, showing that we had no aggressive intentions, I think there was a relief in all over the world. All the heads of states are actually aware of the Kashmir issue today. And they understand the consequences if this goes wrong. Pakistan security forces are strong enough, are powerful enough uh, to handle any sort of uh, situation. Mm-hmm.